So this is uh, what we need to do to get Go up and running. And we need to go through this process. And so right now we're doing the intro, but in the next video we're going to get a terminal emulator. So I'm going to show you how to do this on both Windows and also on the Mac. If you're on the Mac, you already have a terminal. You don't need to go get anything, so you won't need to watch uh, that movie. But if you're running on Windows, I use uh, Unix commands at the command prompt. I just find that that works better more frequently with programming. And so uh, the difference there is, you know, this is a graphical user interface right here, this computer, what you're looking at, right? Like I've got my desktop with absolutely zero icons on it, but I've got these icons down here. And I could click these graphical icons. It's a graphical user interface. There's also, before graphical user interfaces, we had the command prompt, right? So here's the command prompt, and it says the command prompt. And at the command prompt, I can't run Unix commands. So the command prompt, you operated in the command prompt by typing in things like dir. And it shows me everything in the directory. <laughs> this is like computers 1980s style, right? And uh, I can't run commands like ls, which is a Unix command prompt command, or terminal command. And, uh, and so I use Unix commands. We're going to use Unix. So we're going to get a terminal emulator for Windows, which will allow us to use Unix commands. And I just find that Unix commands work better uh, in programming. That's for me. So I'm going to pass that on to you. I think that's a, a you know, Windows programming is great, but it's like, you know, knowing how to work on Fords versus knowing how to work on Ferraris. <laughs> I don't know, whichever analogy you want to choose. So we're going to get a term terminal emulator. And I'm going to give you some installation insights. So uh, that might sound kind of like rudimentary and basic. But we're going to learn about like uh, hash algorithms like SHA-1 and checksums and what that does for us and how do we run one. And so we'll see, we'll see what that is, how that can help keep us safe. It's just kind of a, a neat thing to know about. And then we're going to configure our Go workspace. And so Go has certain ways things need to be configured. Uh, for instance, you got to have your curly braces like right after your function declaration. They can't be on the next line. And uh, the other thing about Go is that you got to have a workspace. And this workspace is really important. So you have to have a certain folder structure in which you're doing your Go work. And the reason it's important is because it maps to namespacing. And namespacing is going to allow us to have unique names for all of our code and anybody else's code so that we can really easily share code. So Go is written to be able to work in you know, large dev teams and to be able to share code, open source style. And, uh, and so having the correct Go workspace is really important. After we've done that, we're going to uh, configure some, uh, we're going to learn about envir environment and path variables and why they're important, how we could see them. And then we're going to configure the environment and path variables on the Mac or on Windows, whichever one you're running. And then we'll, we'll test our installation. So maybe somewhere in there we'll make sure we'll do that. And, uh, you know, we'll just run Go version or something like that. So that's, uh, that's what we have coming up in this section.